Hey guys, it's Big Dave here for Tales of Talara, and it's Monday, and you know that means it should be time for Warfronts, but not this week. I didn't really get any great footage for Warfronts, so instead of trying to dress up those turds, I thought we should talk about the elephant in the room, the 800-pound gorilla in the room, the expansion in the room. That's right, Storm Legion. Rift is getting its first proper expansion. A lot of details have come out since its announcement on the 31st of May. E3 has come and gone and brought even more information. So I'm going to go through, recap the public info, and give you some of my thoughts. This will be one of my classic rambling sessions, and those of you who've been around for a while know that every now and then I like to take a break to just kind of talk in a sort of a rambly, vloggy fashion, and that's what you're getting right now, this week, instead of episode 51 of Warfronts. Let me first start out by saying thank you to everybody with the well wishes for episode 50. It was a nice milestone for me. It means I've been doing this for over a year at this point with my missed shows here and there. And it was a really, really great thing to see everybody uh, wishing me well and congratulating me on uh, the milestone that I have hit. All right, so let's get right into this, guys. I'm not going to be breaking any amazing news. I'm not doing my own reporting here. I am brazenly stealing from others. In particular, the mini site that Tryon has for the expansion in and of itself. So I'm going to hit the features that I think are key, talk a little bit about the ones that I really like or that I think have a, a lot of potential, and we will move through this as quickly as possible. So we've got two new continents coming, basically tripling the size of the existing world. I think that's really cool. It gives you more places to go. I would like them to. St I would like to see them expedite the leveling process. You know. Sometimes you feel like you're in one particular area a little bit too long, and with more space, if they do the thing which I think they should, uh, and spread the leveling out across all of these continents so that future players who are coming into the game can level in all these different areas, sort of the way that World of Warcraft was when it first launched, you know, when you hit level 20, you could go, from a Horde perspective, because that was me, you know, I'm a Horde guy, you could go to Hillsbrad, or you could go to the Barrens. You know, you, you could be in either one of those depending on where you started. If you were an undead, you were going to be taking that path towards Hillsbrad and, uh, and and eventually, you know, end up at Torin Mill where all of the awesome PvP used to happen. Or if you were a Torin or uh, or Troll, etc., you were going to be ending up in, in the Barrens and the surrounding areas, Stone Talon Mountains, all that stuff. So I, I really liked that old way of doing things. There wasn't this funnel that moved everybody in the same direction. You had different places you could go and different things you could do. I really would like to see that actually happen so that there is a distinct difference between the leveling experiences that you can have based on some decisions that you can make, not just, okay, I'm a guardian, so I'm going to go through a couple of guardian ex exclusive zones before getting dumped out into the uh, PvP zones, or I'm a, a defiant and I'm going to do the same. I'm going to get a couple of my own zones before eventually getting dumped out into the dual, uh, the contested zones, if you will. So uh, really looking forward to that. Hope that goes well. They're going to be adding a lot, sure, a lot of quests, of course, all that kind of stuff. I'm excited about Tempest Bay. It is the uh, neutral city, if you will. It's the Shatrath of this expansion. Uh, and I'm excited because to me that signals a de-escalation of the conflict between Guardians and Defiance. I've never bought this conflict. I understand uh, that there were problems. You know, if you've, if you've looked into the lore, you know the reason that these two sides don't get along. You know the problems. I mean, there's the obvious stuff. Defiance with their machinery and Guardians with their light. But, frankly, there's bigger stuff going on in the world. And you, you're not managing to sell me a conflict between these two factions when really they're going to have to work together to, uh, to save their own world. Eh, you know. So, ten more levels and, and the really exciting thing... A new soul for each calling, as well as, as they've said in a Q&A, balancing for every calling. So they are apparently going to rework certain callings that they don't think work or that they think duplicate other uh, existing callings that are more powerful. And they're going to hopefully bring a lot of new interesting mechanics. You know, they're vague on everything at this point, of course, but uh, that's really exciting. I mean, seeing what they do, you know, what more could they give to a rogue that he doesn't already have? You know, where, where are they going to go with that? Are we going to see... Uh, are we going to see warriors healing, you know, with, with an actual healing spec? Are we going to see tanking 
uh, you know, mages in, in a proper tanking. Like, is, is, are they going to really just blur the lines between all the classes and, and all the callings and really just blow us away? And I, and I hope that they do, uh, but that might be asking quite a bit. Eh, you know. So let's see, what else do we have here? Uh, seven new dungeons, three new raids, a chronicle, and more, of course. Always and more. Uh, really like the look of this expansion so far from what I've seen. A lot of like clockwork stuff and sort of magical machinery. It's not, it's not copying off what the Defiance already have. It's got its own unique look, and I, I really, really like it. I'll give you some links in the description below to some footage, uh, a live stream that was showing a lot of stuff during E3, as well as a couple of stories on uh, massively detailing some stuff. So let's see what else, what else, what else. Uh, let's see, going down the bullet points. Join the hunt, blah, blah, blah. Legions of Fantastic Creatures, certainly, certainly. Okay, okay, dimensions, player housing, guild housing, cool. That's not something that's ever really attracted me to a game, but hey, that's cool, great. I mean, it's another thing to do. It's another thing to offer to keep this game viable. It's something that people want, you give it to them. I really like that approach. I mean, in all of this time, World of Warcraft has not managed to give that to people. It's one of the things that they've constantly asked for, and they're just not giving it out. Okay, whatever. Uh, they're expanding crafting. Cool, cool. As well as capes. Yes, finally, capes. That uh, one particular... That one particular... Uh, what is it? The uh, skeletal knight... I can't even remember. The one necro uh, creature that has a cape will no longer be the only guy in the world who manages to have figured out how to make a cape. So I'm really, really excited about capes, just because it adds, again, another visual element, something else to the game that you should have always had there from the beginning. So that basically does it for the officially released info, at least the stuff that they have on the mini site right now. But I will direct you over to uh, the article on massively.com uh, or massively.joystick.com if you want to be... Uh, precise about it. They have a couple of interesting articles. They are linked in the description below. One of them features an amazing looking set of boss screens. Uh, this is also available on the stream, which is also linked in that uh, in that massively article. Uh, and these bosses are ginormous. It even says in here, in here, let me find it. Yeah, that you'll actually be attacking parts of the boss that your tank won't necessarily just be standing there beating on the guy's ankles. Uh, that you will be systematically removing sections of his armor, uh, attacking different aspects of, of him, uh, of his body to weaken him. It sounds really, really cool. In that article, they also uh, they also confirm a digital collector's edition if one cares about such things. I've got my turtle, so you know, at one point at least I cared about that. Uh, so it, it, it it's a great looking expansion. Like I said, they have this sort of mechanized look to the uh, to the creatures. It it again isn't stealing off of uh, off the defiant mechanism look, but it really has its own unique uh, scheme. It looks really good. It, it does have a sort of a, maybe a sort of an old war vibe to it, if, if you will, if, if I may be so bold as to draw a comparison between this game and, and its main competitor. Uh, it really, really, it looks good. I mean, a couple of different bosses that they're showing in the, uh, in the stream, uh, which I have linked, of course, in the description below, as I think I've said about five times now. Uh, they, they look really good. I mean, stuff is really, really looking up. I love the way that the game is going. I really, really enjoy uh, being a Rift player right now. Uh, and it's something that I'm just absolutely uh, planning to continue to do as long as I can. Uh, I think that this expansion might signal a return for me to PvE, which is something that I've sort of forsaken. It used to be my forte, and I've sort of forsaken it uh, for PvP. And a lot of that's because of my time constraints. I can pop into three or four PvP matches in the time it would take me to do three or four quests. And uh, it just, I feel like I accomplish more in the end. But uh, but this expansion is looking extremely promising. Don't forget that 1.9 is still on the docket. That will be coming out quite soon. Uh, one of the things that is going to be included in there that I didn't even know is barber shops. Anybody want a haircut? Okay. Uh, you got the triple PVP, all that stuff. It, it really, it's it's amazing what they've done uh, with this uh, with this game in the year and some months since it was released. I mean, 
When I first heard, just when my ears heard that there was going to be a Rift expansion, before I read anything about it, I thought, oh my god, how are they going to actually do enough? Given how much they've given us for free over the year of the game's existence, how are they going to do enough to actually make this feel like an expansion? And I have to say that I think with uh, tripling the size of the world, adding 10 levels, a massive new uh, neutral city, uh, new calling, uh, new souls for every calling completely revisiting all of the callings. Oh, you know, seven seven dungeons, three raids. I think they're doing a pretty good amount to actually uh, move the game forward. And uh, I do feel like this is... Uh, it's a big enough thing to call it an expansion. I, I was a little optimi uh, not optimistic, pessimistic at first when I heard that, and uh, now I have turned to optimism. So uh, I hope everybody is out there consuming information on Storm Legion. There's an official trailer as well as the stream that they did from E3. So there's a lot of information out there that's come out in the last week or two. So head over to the links in the description below and enjoy the hell out of learning about Storm Legion. I have been Big Dave, and until next time, take it easy.